Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Slice Virtually Live at the National Bank Open in Toronto. We've been here all week. As you guys know, I've been behind the scenes representing you, the YouTube fans, uh, in the press room at the tournament, which has been awesome. So thank you guys for helping get us there. Tomorrow's the final. we got Daniil Medvedev versus Riley Opelka. Three years ago, if I said that was the final of a Masters 1000, you'd be like, who are those guys? Those guys are like those challenger players, right? But yeah. The next gen is here, especially in the Masters 1000. We've had five different Masters 1000s and 10 different finalists this year in 2021. So it's really a look at the future, which is pretty cool if uh, you like the future. Uh, but I am excited for the big three to get back in action at the US Open. But in this video, we're going to break down the final, see what I've heard from both guys talking to them throughout the tournament. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the draw in Cincinnati and break that down as well for you. So we got lots to get into, as always, here on The Slice. Thanks for being here, and let's get into it. I go fair. Yeah, I'm mean, so coming at you man. from the Delray Beach. I'm coming at you from the Delray Beach. I'm coming at you from the Delray Beach. I'm coming at you from the Delray Beach. We are here with the man, Neil Azrana. Welcome to The Slice. Thanks for being here as always, folks. Uh, wow. Saturday, semifinals day was a great day of tennis. Uh, Opelka beat Sitsipas. That was an amazing match. We're going to get into it. And Medvedev kind of put the hammer down on Isner. Uh, but first, check out my article where I talk more in depth about you know, kind of the themes I've, I've heard from players. Really been impressed with how in depth some of them go with journalists like myself. Uh, I feel like I've been asking good questions because I always get really good responses and it feels like, you know, we're just chatting tennis, which is really fun. Uh, so check out that article. Go to the website. I appreciate that. And also check out my latest vlog where I try to take my forehand from looking like Benoit Pairs to Roger Federer's. That's right here. It's a pretty good video. Uh, I check it out. And thanks for subscribing, liking, sharing. As always, make sure you like, 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 like. Thanks for liking. Um, Opelka takes out Sitsipas in three sets today. I was picking Sitsipas before the match, obviously, because, you know, he's just, he was the, he's the number two player in the draw or three player in the draw. And he's, you know, for a lot of reasons. But this was obviously a dangerous match, especially with the way that Riley had been playing, serving huge, and looking like he's moving better than we've seen him ever. And, and I talked to him about that this week. I was like, bro, I can't, I was, I'm trying to sit here as a fan imagining what it would be, pl- to, would be like to play someone who's six foot ten, running around the court, hitting forehands on the run, getting to net, putting away the balls. It's just, it would just be a nightmare. So... Obviously, for Stefano Sitsipas, that's not fun either. Uh, but there's a lot of things Stefanos could do to hurt Riley. Uh, Riley Opelka talked about how good Stefanos is at getting around and only using his forehand, protecting his backhand. backhand. Uh, in this match, though, is basically a server's delight. Like, Opelka's the bigger server, but actually, Stefanos had technically the better serving day. He won more percentage of the points on his first serve, and he had l- more unreturned serves. So it was interesting, and I talked to Riley after the match, and he said he almost felt like the inconsistency that he had on Stefanos' service games allowed him to get that one, only one break, uh, crucially in the third set, because a lot of, the, a lot of Stef- Stefanos would help hold super easily in a lot of his service games, and then all of a sudden, uh, Riley would, in, you know, in this game in particular, just put a bit of pressure on him. But that's because I fe- he felt like Stef- Stefanos couldn't go anywhere in the match because St- Riley was winning points from the baseline, from the net, on her, his serve, obviously. So he just kept constant pressure on Stefanos. And then Stefanos sits past, basically kind of cracked in that game. Uh, had a double, two double faults, I think. Shanked backhand. So that was basically the story of the match because it's... Uh, Sitsipas only got one break point chance against Opelka serve. Couldn't capitalize, obviously, as it's so hard to do. And that was that. That was it. Was just a high quality, high level match uh, from two huge hitters, which was pretty amazing to see. So, congrats to Riley Opelka. He's a cool guy. He's talking about. It was funny in the press conference. He was talking about the journalist brought up, or he wrote "serve bot" on the on the lens, and the journalist obviously went crazy. And they asked him about that. He just thinks it's, he said that's such a stupid term. I think then I think they those guys kind of made that up. But I don't know. He said it's silly to think that those guys who have the big serves are just in the top. 20 or whatever because they have big serves um and he's right 
Isner versus Medvedev was not as close of a match at all. It looked like Isner was slightly hampered. Uh, didn't he was looked like, like look he had something off in his back and he had had that problem obviously a lot before being like six foot ten. That makes sense. Uh, he didn't do a press conference afterwards. Medvedev did though, and he said, "Yeah, he's like I was serving super well. He did. Uh, I think he had eleven aces, and he was just looking pitch perfect, um, which was a little bit different or a lot different as how the match went." Uh, from when he played Huber Hercotch in the quarterfinals, which was arguably a match of the tournament. If you got, I don't know, do you guys see it? Let me know if you did. But that match was just amazing. The amount, like both guys, Medvedev Hercotch, super solid from the baseline. Love just great backhands, forehands, can keep the balls deep. And that's what they did super well in this match. It was like a duel from the baseline. And then, but we also saw that transition game a little bit. Uh, and just amazing, ama- it kind of reminded me of Djokovic Murray from back in the day. It was just super strong baseline play. And honestly, even Medvedev, Medvedev said it at the end, Hercotch probably should have won that. He had a really funny quote, though, when I asked him about you know how nice of a guy Hubert Hercotch is. He's a friend of the show, nicest guy on tour, I think. Medvedev agreed, and he said if he lost a match like that, he wouldn't have been like hugging uh, Medvedev at the end and... Uh, he would have gone to the locker room and cried, basically, which is hilarious. Medvedev is becoming my, I said this on the last video, I think, he is basically my favorite person to talk to in media now. He's just got a great personality, and uh, he's funny, and he's got just unique lines. He's like a walking quote machine, basically. So he's keeping Tennis TV, as he said, uh, busy putting out those one-line hitters. So yeah, that's the final tomorrow. What does each guy got to do? Well, it's going to be a serving masterclass again, obviously. Opelka is going to bring the heat. Medvedev has been serving extremely well. Medvedev's a lot better returner than Opelka is at this point. So I think we'll see something similar where, you know, Sitsipas had a better serving day kind of than Opelka did. Um, but I think Medvedev will be able to handle Opelka's pace from the baseline better. Medvedev is a little bit better on hard court, keeping the balls deep. Um, that'll hurt Opelka. So I think Dev, I think Opelka, Opelka's a bigger underdog in this than he was against um, Sitsipas because of the matchup, because of the ways that Medvedev is able to handle the big serve. He broke, I think he's broken John Isner eight times in the last two matches they've played, which is crazy. Um, so he's able to break big servers. That's not a problem from him. And from the baseline, he's even more strong than Stefanos is with less of a weakness there as, with the one-handed backhand. So it's going to be tough for Opelka, but I think if he copy and paste the level he had today against Sissipas, he's got a good chance, a decent chance at least. Uh, and I think if Medvedev plays his best, he's got the win for sure. But it's all about levels, and it's all about what happens on the day. So that's why we got to wait and see them play, and I make it rhyme. Anyways, we're moving on to Cincinnati. We're going to take a peek here at the draw because, you know, it's the American Hardcore Summer. It's just tournament, 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 U.S. Open. Um, Cincinnati potential quarterfinals. No big three, but that's all G because uh, we got Zverev back and we got Berrettini back. And look at this top eight. That's just amazing. So potentially Medvedev versus Pablo Carreño Busta. Pablo Carreño Busta member took out Djokovic in the semifinals of the Olympics, playing amazing, getting a gold medal for, or a bronze medal for Spain. Then we got Rublev versus Shapovalov. That would obviously be amazing as well. I'd love to see Chapovalov as a Canadian get a bit more of a run going here. Tough outing uh, in Toronto. That was obviously not great for him. Then we got potentially Kaspar Ruud versus Alexander Zverev. Zverev, the Sasha Zverev, the gold medalist from the Olympics. That was. I'm. I'm very interested to see Sasha Zverev's level from here on into the U.S. Open. What I saw against Djokovic, I've said it before. That level was basically unbeatable for the last set and a half. So. I want to see him bring that level more because I just love that tennis. This is absolute weaponry from both sides of the a ball, uh, and that's just crazy to see. So I'm I'm going to see if he can keep that up. I hope he can. I hope he can like figure out. Oh, this is how I was able to be aggressive, you know, and just stay on the aggressive. Uh, that was really cool. Berrettini versus Sitsipas would be a banger in the quarterfinal on the bottom if that were to happen. Sitsipas is obviously going to be wanting a little bit of revenge, not uh, getting too, through to the final of Toronto. That was a tough loss for him today. We'll see how he rebounds. Uh, we got Murray back in action as well. The field's just stacked. Cincinnati is always an amazing tournament. Unfortunately, I won't be there this year. Haven't been let into the media yet, but that might change. I don't know. We've got some people behind the scenes putting in a good word for me. I think I made a good appearance uh, on the scenes uh, with the Toronto tournament. So, yeah, that has been a little look at behind the National Bank Open in Toronto. Again, shout out to Tennis Canada for bringing the slice in. It's been awesome to talk to these players all week long. They're just 
they're legends and it's really cool to see their brains behind their games when you're like watching the match and then you just like flick over to zoom and then you talk to them it's just 2021 COVID times uh being a reporter in COVID times is crazy so thanks for checking out the article link is below thanks for checking out the latest vlog link is below click all the links and Felix Auger Ali Asim as I said uh he is now on top court his courses are now live on top court if you want a free 14-day trial of it the link is below for that appreciate all of your guys' support folks we will see you again on the channel soon stay tuned to the Instagram and the Twitter for daily updates on what's going on see you soon